Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Flights and Builders GNS 530 review coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we jump into the video, I just have one disclaimer. Flight Sim Builder did send me this for review. However, I am not being paid for my videos and all of the opinions about the product are mine and mine alone. The goal of this review series is to be as objective as possible and not litter with a bunch of opinions. Instead, I will go over as many tangible facts about the product so that you can make the best educated decision whether this will be your next purchase. Now, I understand there are some things that I will have to give you my opinions on, and I'll be using some comparable products to help describe what I'm talking about, like when I'm going over knobs or buttons, things like that. There will be a link down below in the description for the GNS 530. However, this is not an affiliate link. I just have it there for your convenience. This video series will be broken up into three parts. Part one, we will focus on the hardware quality and overview of the product. Part two, we will connect the 530 to our PC, download any software from Flight Sim Builder, and then get it connected to Microsoft Flight Simulator. During this process, we will test the ease of installation and integration with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Part three will be my final conclusions about the product after I've done some testing with it, and I may go over some tips and tricks as well. In this part, I will also do a full flight plan so that you can get an idea of how this is gonna operate. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the 530 or just would like a refresher course, I've done a complete tutorial series down below in the description. I'll post links for that. Now, if you have any comments or questions throughout the video today, or if there's something you would like to see specifically about this product, please let me know down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe. Tick on that little bell and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All right, so for this part of the review, I'm going to do the unboxing. I'm going to go through that kind of quick, and then we'll go over all the components that you will get. Now, I also did get the bracket that will go on your Honeycomb Bravo or Alpha, so I'll show you that as well. Just know that is an accessory to the GNS 530. So let me bring you guys in closer to get a better look at while I'm unboxing. This is how everything came packaged to me, but cut the sides off of the box. So let's get to it. Okay, so now that I have everything unboxed, let me push you guys back a little bit so we can go over things individually. All right, so let's go over all the accessories first and then we'll get to the GPS unit. So let me set this aside real quick. Let's start off with our cabling because I know not everybody's PC is going to be right next to where their SIM cockpit is. So let's measure all the cables. This way you'll have an idea of just how far of a reach you'll have. All right. All right, so the HDMI cable is five foot long. Now let's measure the USB cable. All right, the USB cable that's gonna be used to transmit all the data to the GNS 530 is four and a half feet long. The power adapter cable is just about six and a half feet long. In the package, we also get two strips of Velcro, and it looks like we also get two mounting screws. One of the mounting screws has a little o-ring on it and the other one doesn't so there it is i found the o-ring all right so i think that's just about all you get with the base gns 530 package now if you order the ancillary mounting bracket then you will also get these little mounting pieces that you're going to need to mount the 530 to this bracket this metal bracket we'll go over that here in a second but let's take a look at these little mounting pieces now, the very first thing that you'll notice is these are 3D printed, but the quality on them seem very, very good. Whoops. Show you that one. So I hope you're able to see just what kind of quality 
is on these. Okay, so now let's take a look at the mounting bracket for the 530 that they also offer. I'm not exactly sure of the price on this, but I will post that somewhere around here. It has all of the holes already milled into the bottom of the bracket that should fit right on the top of the Bravo. So when we get to part two, we'll be able to test that out and see if everything fits when we connect it. Now, one thing that I did notice here, and I'm, I'm hoping that the camera can pick this up, there was a little bending action happening when it was shipped. I set this on a flat surface. The mounting portion is flat, as you can see right across the bottom. That looks good. But as soon as we lay it down on the face where the 530 is going to be mounted to, that's what we get. So, like I said, I'm probably going to be able to bend this out. It would be nice if maybe they packed that in foam when they sent it, so that wouldn't happen. Now, I'm not sure if they shipped it differently to me because of I was going to be reviewing the product or not. I really can't say. I'm only showing you exactly what I received. So now, before we move on to the 530, let's go ahead and measure the thickness of the metal of this stand because I think you'll be pretty impressed. So the metal that's used here is three millimeters. Let's see if you can get that. For those of you who are in the States, it is 0.1175 inches thick. Fraction form, it's seven sixty-fourths. So I hope I covered all the bases there. So now let's set this aside and take a look at the main attraction, the GNS 530. All right, so this is the GNS 530 that you will receive. And one of the first things that I notice about the 530 is that we also have 3D printed knobs. I notice 3D printed things all the time because I do a lot of it. That doesn't detract from the quality of feel of the knob. So let me bring that up closer so you can see. I hope the contrast comes through all right with that. Quality of the 3D print on the knobs looks really well. You don't have any blobbing, you really can't see a Z seam. What I'm saying might be foreign to some people, but um, that just makes the print look very high quality. The next thing that I notice is the bezel that actually holds the screen in here is also 3D printed. Now, if you look real close in around the bezel of the screen, you will see the 3D printed bezel. <laughs> now, a couple things that are not 3D printed on this. One are the buttons. The actual case of the 530 is not 3D printed. To me, it looks like some sort of plastic or acrylic, and it might be CNC cut. All the numbers and the writing that are on this, they don't feel like they're etched in. It feels like they are painted on. But as you can see, the lettering, the numbers, is real crisp. There's sharp edges on it. There's not a lot of distortion. Now let's turn our attention to the quality of the buttons as well as the rotary knobs that are used for this. I'm going to have to give you some comparables here to kind of give you an idea of what they feel like. For those of you who own a Bravo throttle quadrant, I'll be trying to compare the rotary knobs to the rotary knob on the Bravo. Now, one thing that I've noticed about the Bravo is it's not a very good quality knob, and it's starting to feel a little bit loose now after maybe a year or so. I feel like the inner rotary knob has a much more pronounced click spot than the outer rotary knob that's on this. When as the outer knob, you feel it there, but it almost feels like it's rounding over the top of a gear instead of coming to a point and two pointed gears locking together. The other rotary knob that's on the other side feels exactly the same. So now in comparison to the Bravo, I feel that they have a little bit more resistance when turning than the rotary knob on the Bravo, but the inner knob is, has just got a very nice pronounced click on both of them. Now, for those of you who own a Knobster from Sim Innovations, I can say that these are definitely not as clicky as the Knobster is, but better than the Bravo. So I guess time will tell as to how long these knobs are going to hold up. Now, as far as the buttons on the 530, these are a rubberized button, very similar to what come on the Bravo. I just had to go test the Bravo real quick just to have a comparison. So what I conclude here is the Bravo 
rubber buttons feel about the same as far as the texture is concerned. Now the length of push on the buttons here is much farther than the Bravo. So I would say the length of push here is probably two millimeters versus the Bravo when you push in on those, it's almost an instantaneous click that you'll hear. Now with this, you do not hear that click. You'll feel it a little bit, but you won't hear it as you do on the Bravo. But as far as the touch and feel of all the buttons, they all feel just about the same. There's not one that is any more clicky than the other. The rubber is a great texture on your fingers. So if we take a look at the back of the 530, we have three different connection points. We have our power adapter here, HDMI connector here, and then this is gonna be our USB that's gonna connect for all the electronics over here. You also notice on the back of this that we have studs that are coming through the 530. Now these studs are there on purpose and they are so that we can apply the mounting pieces. And I'm not gonna be able to do it right now because it's bent, but this would slide into your mounting bracket. And then I believe you would loosen up these nuts on the back here slide this on which goes right over each of those holes and then tighten down that nut and that would then sandwich the metal bracket between your 3d printed and the gns 530. now what i want to do is take some measurements for everyone and then we're going to weigh the 530 itself all right so as far as the visible screen dimensions and i say visible because there could possibly be some screen behind the bezel itself from side to side bezel is four inches, and from top bezel to bottom bezel is three inches. The bottom encoder knob is 20 millimeters in diameter, and the inner knob is 14 millimeters in diameter. And again, to give you a comparison, the Bravo throttle quadrant rotary knob is 14 millimeters in diameter. So it's the same size as the inner encoder knob on the 530. Now, I don't know who might want to know this, but from the bottom of the knob to the top of the knob is 25 millimeters. All right, so now let's throw it on the scale and see how much she weighs. We are at 420 grams or 14.8 ounces. So you're very close to one pound. All right, so that's going to finish us up with part one of the GNS 530 review. If you have any comments or questions or something you would like to see about the product, please let me know down below in the comments section. And as always, if you enjoy today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you would like to see part two of the series, click up here if it's available.